All right, so I'm using my pad research and development. Or wait, no. I, I'm using pad PVC research and... Wait, no, pad, what the fuck? Wow, you're a fucking idiot. Now, one other thing I also have to do before this comes apart is the hole here and hole there, they're gonna come up through this frame rail. I have to transfer the two holes that come up from the bottom to the bottom of this frame rail. And the way you do that, is with transfer punches. Uh, what they do is they're, these are two metric ones I ordered because I have a set of standard and they were a hair too small and a hair too big to fit snug so I ordered these from McMaster car and then what these do is go under and they basically they'll slide up in the hole with a, a nice fit and then you take a hammer and tap the bottom and it gives you a, a center mark hole on the bottom and then I can drill into that with a pilot bit and then transfer the mark around, drill down with a pilot bit, and then what I'm gonna do is just drill the holes a hair big and make um, almost like a sleeve that's gonna go in and it'll have like a, a shoulder up top that'll go outside. So once I get that located, I can loosely bolt this back up, tack them in, and that'll make sure I can double check the subframe uh, left to right, front to back. Then that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room and I'll tack those in, and then um, they'll be they'll end up being flush with the bottom. So when I get this thing on the rotisserie again, then I can fill in the weld on the bottom. And that way, when you clamp this down, you won't be crushing this tube because you'll have a piece welded to the top and a piece welded to the bottom, and it'll actually be the exact uh, width of this. So yeah, you won't crush it when you snug them down, tighten them down. Whatever the torque spec is from Toyota on this thing. What I did is... No. String and duct tape there. I printed these out. <laughs> this thing will focus. And they're basically, they shove in the ends of the PVC and so you can set up what, um, kind of like set your bars up, see what it's gonna look like, then you can actually measure angles off this if you like. And uh, I measured these, this is a, that bend down there is a 42 degree bend. Um, I don't know if I'm going with the FIA bar yet, the windshield support bar, because even now with this bar up here, this thing is a little bit of a pain in the ass to get in and out. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I might do the first piece up, but then I can also do it with a single piece all the way up and gusset this, so, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll get the door bars in and see how it is climbing in and out and just put this bar here and see how much worse it's gonna be getting in and out because I have to step over anyway to get in here. So, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Let's say you make something like this and then you wanna know about how much tube you're gonna need to buy or if you have it, you can cut it and so you're not wasting a bunch of stuff. That original cheater piece I bought, if you put this on the bend, because obviously this is a five and a half degree center line radius, this isn't. So what you have to do is you have to have a mark where the start of your bend is and you can just line up the two outside edges, bring this line straight down and this will tell you how much you have here. You can measure on the tube here and then obviously you have to transfer this mark to here and then you can measure down the other tube the other way and that'll get you in the ballpark of what's gonna fit. I'm probably gonna add an inch and a half to each end, just to make up for the um, the coping to meet up with the uh, the main hoop and the door bar there. 
it's always a good idea just to leave a little extra on and trim it long and trim it back because if you trim it too short to begin with you can throw the tube in the garbage or set it aside if you're ever going to use it again. So one of the easier ways to do this is to set this on the ground. And you have to set it at the angle you're at because if the angle is greater, it's going to move your mark further down the tube. So I set my protractor up for 42, set it up at 42. I use these two speed squares to basically give me an outside edge of both of these and what you're going to want to do is set this one up here and line this up this way and then slide it straight back until the heel of that bend barely touches that one and then you want to make sure you're looking up here and this one is parallel with the one you have. I mean it can be off by a hair and you'll still be alright. And Then you transfer the mark down to the... I don't know if you can see it, the mark's about right here. Uh, make it a crow's foot so you can see it and then once you have it on one side that's it. All you do is measure from here to here and measure from here to here and you can transfer it to this side then you can measure out each way and figure out where your how long your piece of tube needs to be. Well obviously with the uh, with the bend in it too you might want to you can take like a tape measure and, and wrap this but it might pull the tube I think there's an equation for it, but I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, the tube stretches a little bit, but I can't imagine it's anything huge in like a 42 degree bend. So I think there's a video or there's something someone did where they basically took their tube kind of like this same thing. It was a cheater tube and what they did is when it was completely straight, they made a mark every inch all the way down the tube and they knew from you know, point A to point B was was 12 hash marks, it was one foot, so then they bend the tube on the radius they need, then they come in and use a cloth tape and measure from the bend to where the bend stopped, and then you can see where in one foot it overbent by, or not in one foot. In a 90 degree bend, when you measured from point A to point B, it would tell you how much the tube actually bent uh, stretched, not bent. Duh, it's a 90 degree bend, you know how much it bent. How much the tube stretched, or how much it stretched the tube getting from point A to point B, if you can visualize what that is. And just to drive this point home, if you, end, if you set up something like this, this mark where this is, is only good for a 42 degree bend. Once you lessen this or bend it more, these this line will, will move depending on, actually it'll move closer to the center line when you try to straighten it out or don't have a lot of bend in it and it'll move further away the more bend you have in it. So just keep that in mind. And the nice thing about setting these up is kind of a template for doing stuff is if you're uh, if you're happy with one at least the way these door bars are going to go the bottom bend is going to mimic the top bend so uh, once I was happy with the bottom I kind of threw the top up there to see what it would look like see where it was where the two bends are going to you know kind of miss each other and once you grab the bend off one then everything's duplicated to the other one because the way it's going to fit it's going to be you know, kind of like the offset where they're like laying over top of each other like this. And one thing is when you do that, when you make that mark I was talking about with the uh, with the template piece, when you fit it up when it's on the floor, at least then you can get a close measurement because you know... Oh, let me move this guy out of the way. You know that tube is touching right there. So if you measure from where your mark would be, where your bend is, you can come down and you can make that maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch longer, and then make that notch. Do the same thing on this tube, make that notch, and then come fit this thing in. And that way you might have to notch it one more time, but 
at least you'll notch it one more time and get it to fit great than cut it too far on the first one and make it garbage. So hopefully tomorrow the steel's ready. I just have to go pick it up for these door bars, not for the front. They don't have the uh, steel I need for the front, so hopefully tomorrow they can tell me when they can get it. So this video will stop now, but it'll pick up tomorrow when I have the tube here. All right, it's the next day. I got the steel. Uh, I only got half of it. The person I talked to yesterday when I bought it, or ordered it, said that they did not have inch and a half in stock. They only had inch and five eighths. So when I went to pick it up today, I asked the other salesperson, hey, how long is it gonna to take to get the inch and a half in? And they said, what are you talking about? We have inch and a half in stock. I said, awesome, let me have a stick of it and can you cut it in half for me real quick? Cause I have no way to cut it. Oh, sorry, we don't, what did he say? We don't cut while customers are waiting. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. So you're gonna make me come back tomorrow to get this when your salesperson's the one that fucked up in the first place. So whatever, but yeah. Here are all the door bars. As you can see, the uh, analog bender does a pretty nice job when you have it set up right. That's this guy with the coat hanger pointer. See, as long as you set this thing up right and you kind of know what you're doing, you can make repeated perfect bends like that. And obviously the first one was a little long when I bent it because that was a spare piece I had. So I bent that and then took the measurements and then the rest of them got cut to length and then bent. So there's less work, which is awesome. So hopefully uh, tomorrow I'll go pick up the inch and a half and then I can get the two front bars bent for up here. And, yeah, keep plugging away on this thing. Oh, when I was talking about those transfer punches, the uh, transfer punch I got, when I went to put, I put the first one and it fit great, and the other one I knew was gonna fit because I ordered it for that size, but if you can see, where the hell is it? Oh, right there. If you, if you look right in the middle, there's a crack in it. Don't ask me how the hell that got there. It's not through the whole thing, but... I mean, it'll still work. I'm gonna chuck it in the lathe and spin it with some emery cloth. Just take it down a, a thousandth or two, and then it should, uh, should fit in there.